This is an extremely intricate test. It takes time to practice and master these skills that you need. I didn't do this part-time, I did this full-time. If you think this is something you could just study for last minute and just do, take studying of this test very, very seriously. This test is not easy. Hey everybody, Ken, I'm Kevin back again with another video. On today's video, I'm gonna be discussing my LSAT journey slash experience my strengths, my weaknesses, my study times, attempts, everything that you need to know about my experience. I'm gonna be discussing that today. For me, Corona couldn't have come at a better time when I was writing this test. Uh, the first time around, good thing I didn't write it then because when this came around, everything was closed. Everybody was on lockdown. Nobody could go anywhere. So I was just at home studying. It could not have been a more perfect situation for me. It was a blessing in disguise, really. Uh, anytime anybody asked me, is uh, old, oh, did you not like studying at home? It's like, I loved it, because it really worked out in my favor. In addition to that, due to COVID-19, we had to do everything remotely. We had to write the, even the LSAT, we had to write at home uh, through a proctoring software on the LSAC website. And because of that, LSAC officially cut down the length of the test. So there was normally, um, and with the essay, I think, what was that, five or six sections? For me, there was just four. And that, that was just amazing. Like I, I could be not be more thankful for that. And I just got really lucky. And I think LSAT Flex is still continuing for at least another year or so. If you're writing within that time frame, consider yourself very lucky because our predecessors and our succeeders, <laughs> they're getting the normal LSAT, right? So definitely um, that was something that was really, really beneficial for me. In terms of strengths and weaknesses with this test, when I first came in studying for the LSAT, pretty much everything was a weakness for me. There are three main sections of the test, as I mentioned in my last video, you could check it out up here or up here. Reading comprehension, analytical reasoning, also known as logic games, and logical reasoning. The ones that I struggled with the most was, uh, first and foremost was reading comprehension because the course that I took, that we started off training with reading comprehension. There's just a... There's a certain way that you have to do reading comprehension on the LSAT. You have to read the text, analyze it, break it down, memorize certain pieces of information, memorize the flow of the argument, or not even the argument, the structure of the sentence. Does it make sense? Does it flow correctly? And retain all that information and then go answer the question. So it's it it's not as easy as, was, as what some people may tell you. It's not like Oh, you just read the passage and you answer no it's not like that there's lots of work that you have to do so reading comprehension was tough for me in the beginning but make no mistake it's not something that's impossible to get good at um, after uh, months and months of practice definitely that's something you could do really really well on so don't let that story discourage you you can definitely do good as I kept practicing and drilling and under real time conditions um, it got a lot easier and I excelled in reading comprehension actually and the other section that I struggled with was definitely analytical reasoning at the beginning um, after that it just got extremely fun for me actually that's why they're called logic games because they are literal games and you have to put your main brain through some work however it's it's fun if you know how to do it i was just totally blown away about how you even put this thing together and answer these questions i was like do i really have to sit here and take like literally draw out diagrams of each variable in this question and then flip it and and move it around and uh, put in scenarios and make this chart that we had to make this chart for this class that I took I was like how am I gonna do this within 35 minutes for this entire section I just didn't think it was possible however again through practice and sharpening your skills and patience and a lot of consistency um, I did I did do well for myself in the logic game section too or also known as analytical reasoning so those two sections were where I had the most trouble. Those were my weaknesses for sure. However, for strengths, definitely, definitely, logical reasoning was off the rip. I knew that's something that I'm going to be good at. Number one, because there were much shorter passages, maybe a few sentences. And two, it's the streams that you could have taken it. I memorized them. Like, that's just the way my brain functioned was like, oh, like this, you have to answer it like this. Oh, this question the answer must be this. Like there are certain ways that you're, there are certain paths that your brain has to go down when you come across logical reasoning sections. You guys will know what you mean, what I mean when you get to courses, but that was a, a, a section that of the LSAT that I excelled at right away. Um, well, not right away, but the quickest out of all three. And I that was um, not only something that was a strength of mine, but definitely something that I enjoyed. Another section of strength that I had on the LSAT was the essay portion, or also known as LSAT writing. 
Um, this is just because of my background in liberal arts and I love writing essays, I love proving my point in a case, I love public speaking. All those skills and interests together really helped me uh, put, that, put that together really well. In terms of my time of study for the LSAT, I took roughly one whole year to properly be ready and successful at my test writing. I started taking my LSAT very seriously um, only after I graduated university. So before that, I had a plan of joining a class just to get my feet wet, just to understand what it was this test exactly was. Like I really needed to know um, the lay of the land first. So I took this course at my university that was being held and I went in just for the first few weeks just to get a very rudimentary understanding of what this test is exactly. What are the components? What do I have to get good at? What do I have to excel in? Very quickly, I realized that you can't balance that in work or you can't balance that in school, at least me personally, because if I wanted to do something, I wanted to do it really, really well, or at least put all my effort into it so that I, I be somewhat successful in this venture. That being said, after a few weeks, I uh, not a few weeks, actually, I went pretty much six or six to eight weeks into the course and I think it was a 12 week course um, I decided to put a halt on the course over there and uh, continue with my studies focus 100% on getting the highest GPA possible and then come back to that course later on after I graduated university I contacted the course again and I said you know I'm ready to come back this time full steam ahead and that was I joined that was even in a, a longer course because it was more detailed than the other one that one was just a crash course for the upcoming LSAT but I made sure to join this one. It was more um, slow pace, so which was a lot better. When I joined the second time around, I couldn't tell you how happy I was that I got my feet wet the year prior. Um, this is something I definitely recommend for anybody trying to get into the LSAT or first uh, studying or getting into finding a course that's right for them. Oh my God, if you can do that, and you know, in, in times where you feel like you're not um, pressured to do well on the test, just take like even one or two classes just to see just to have a slight understanding of what it is what you're getting yourself into before you get into it i definitely recommend that because a lot of times what happens is that people just take the course flat out when they have to and they feel this immense amount of pressure and overwhelmness because it's it's just a lot it's just a lot off the rip so I was really happy that I did do that in the beginning. I'd recommend you guys do that too. But even with that, I was still having trouble grasping the, what do I call it? The, I don't want to call it concepts, but the ways, the technique, let's say, the ways in which you write the test and how you're supposed to prepare for it and, and do well and be successful on the test. I was having a hard go at it because it, you have to work your brain in a way that has never been worked before. Even as a, a successful university student, you know, even the smartest of kids struggle with this test. So it was that type of introduction to this new realm of study. So um, that was definitely tough. All in all then, I'd say my study time was quite long, uh, all things considered. Because I did start that, that uh, getting my feet wet period fairly early, I think, September 2019. And I put a halt on it. So I was still in, in between just checking it out here and there just to keep freshen up. But really started taking it seriously. Uh, when was that? That was uh, 2020, uh, the summer of 2020. So let's just say that's a year and a bit uh, worth of studying uh, on and off. But consistently, I'd say still a year because of my number of attempts. My number of attempts for the LSAT were two times. I only wrote the LSAT twice. First time around, I wasn't so successful. I, I didn't do as well as I expected, so I knew I had to write again. Second time around was perfect. It was exactly what I needed and the rest is history. And I'm gonna share this now with you guys so you don't make the same mistake that I did. Um, it's very possible to just do one attempt and do well enough. Um, don't think that it's impossible and no matter what anybody tells you, you're the person writing the test. You know your own capabilities, right? So if you think or you only want to write it one time, Put 110% effort into prep. Don't cheat yourself once. I mean, not even one day out of the entire year that you're studying. Don't try and finesse the system. Don't try and, um, you know, take a day off when you don't need one. You really got to commit yourself to doing well on this prep. And I say that to say this. In my very first attempt, I was studying very, very hard, very hard. 
And this was like studying that I've never really done before. Uh, it's mentally exhausting, it's mentally challenging. So there were times where I definitely took shortcuts when I shouldn't have. And what do I mean by shortcuts? Shortcuts as in, I finished a test, I took it up, and I didn't properly review my questions. You shouldn't do that, ever. I don't care how tired you are, take a break, come back and review the questions because that's where the real work starts. My tutor told me that so many times and I thought to myself, I'm like, yeah, like I know my own limits. Let me just review this another time. And I didn't end up reviewing it. You learn very quickly in LSAT training that doing the bare minimum like that is not going to get you anywhere. It'll keep you in the same place. When you write a test, go back, review it. It's very important. Like my tutor said, that's where the real work starts. That is the most true thing that I've ever heard. Nonetheless, I was still working very hard. I was still making uh, fairly good progress for uh, the, the odd times that I would not review the test. Um, however, that still came, came around to haunt me. Uh, the LSAT, you can't, you, like I mentioned, you can't really slack off for even one day. Otherwise, this is what will happen. When that happened, I was just a few points shy of what I needed and what I wanted for the test. So I knew I had to write again. At that point, I contacted my tutor again. I told her, you know, this is what happened and this is what it is. And I totally changed my game plan after that. 100%, I just, every single test, every single day, I was just reviewing, reviewing, reviewing. I'd write the test and my endurance just went up because my drive went up. My, the, whole, the whole playing field just changed for me. I said, no, I'm getting into law school. There's no other way for me. After that point, I set a routine for myself. I wake up every day at 5.30 before the sun would rise and I would start doing a test immediately. I Well, not immediately, you know, you get up, brush, wash your face, whatever, even before eating breakfast, before even drinking coffee, straight right to the test. The point of doing that was to be able to then do that test anytime, anywhere. If I could do it right when I get up, when my brain is still kind of foggy, hazy, and, I, and I'm doing well at that time, imagine when I'm totally comfortable in my own home taking LSAT Flex. That was the whole point of that. Going more into detail about my LSAT training, specifically about um, which course I took. I went with a completely uh, private coach. Uh, she was She did hold an entire class and she had a class and I was in that class, but uh, in essence, she, she worked like a coach as well. You could contact her pretty much at any time and she'd sit there and break down one question for one hour. She was so driven to helping you. That was the type of professor she was. Um, I even talked about her in my last video. You guys can check it out there. I decided to do that because I knew Kaplan, Princeton, is Princeton even have one? I don't know. Um, Power Score, Seven Sage. I just knew those companies weren't for me. It seemed too formulaic. It seemed too... Even Khan Academy is actually really good, but I just didn't end up going there. Those companies just seem to, what's the word? Um, formulaic is one, but uh, they, there, there was not enough one-on-one -on -one that, that I need to succeed in, in any type of training. So I knew that I had to find a coach. That's another tip that I would give definitely. Find the type of training that works best for you. If you're in a training right now that is not working and you've been in it for a few weeks and you're trying to thug it out and see if it works for you. It's usually not the case that it's not working for you, right? So it's your money, it's your time. You can withdraw at any time, okay? Don't be scared to, to cancel your seven stage or whichever one or uh, power score one and, and go with a private tutor if you want to or the vice versa, right? Be very wise and be very careful with um, how you're spending your time and money. The best study tips I can give you for the LSAT is Number one, like I just mentioned, make sure to have a routine. Um, it doesn't have to be as early as 5.30, maybe six, maybe seven, but for me, that's what worked best. I had to get up right before the sun and I had to put myself through strenuous, strenuous mental training to be successful at this test because to me, there was no other way. Please do try to make yourself a schedule and stick to it. And what I mean by stick to it, six days a week, if not seven. Seven's a bit extreme even for me, but tr when you make a routine, the point of having a routine is to stick to it. So no matter what, no matter what type of party you have that you would wanna go to that evening or going out with your friends or whatever, there come sacrifices with doing well on this test. You'd have to put a pause on that for some time and they're, they're, they're just gonna have to understand. And my next tip, definitely, organization. I can't tell you how important organization is. I got so many notes, this is heavy now. Oh my goodness, all of these are color coordinated and 
you know that's how that's how you should be when you're taking this course even these uh this notebook that i had i was taking notes with tabbed for every week every section and you just got to be very very organized and neat because already this test is making you go through a lot of thoughts in your head so your mind is already cluttered if your environment is also cluttered and your notes are already cluttered, you're not gonna perform well. You're not gonna be successful. I'll tell you that right now, that's objective truth. See, if you look at these notes, lesson two, reading comprehension continued, and I just kept it neat, color coordinated every week. That's just the way you should have your notes. Get yourself brand new notebooks, brand new paper, pens, highlighters, folders, tabs, color coded, everything. Really arm yourself to take this test on. Brand new stuff, I mean, Really don't use any old stuff, in my opinion, that's old energy, old aura, like you're starting something fresh, you're starting something new. Definitely invest in that stuff and uh, you, you'll thank yourself later because when you're organized physically, you're organized up here and that translates to a better result in, in the test taking. Another tip that I would suggest is either praying or meditating daily. This is non-negotiable. And I say this because this test, like I mentioned a million times in this video, it's a very mentally taxing test. Set some time for yourself, whether that's 5.30 in the morning, like myself, or late at night. Take some time for yourself and really collect yourself mentally. Make sure that you stay strong mentally. For some that might be praying, for some that might be meditation, for some that might be yoga, for some that might be exercise. Whatever it is that keeps you mentally in check and mentally smoothed out and zened out and mellowed out um, as long as possible during this study time, make sure to do that. And this leads me to my next tip is having a work-life balance. Even though you should take studying for this test extremely, extremely seriously and work very hard and this should be your number one priority no matter what. That doesn't mean that this should rob you of your happiness or your mental health at all. If you've made it this far into your academic journey, um, you're very capable people. So you know when to take breaks and you know when to, you know, uh, put a pause on everything just for a second and to, to, to take that time off, that well needed time off. So at the end of the week, if you feel like you've done really well this week, um, you're, you, you've done, uh, you've made a lot of progress in a section that you weren't so good at before and or your friend calls you out and you say you know what i am going to go up this weekend definitely do that right there's always time to balance that's the whole point of a work-life balance as time progresses and you get better at the test and you feel more comfortable there's definitely room for both so don't neglect yourself don't neglect um, your family your friends your loved ones make sure to spend time with them as well it's it's not as as bold as as you think it is or i'm making it out to be in this video and you'll know what i mean as you advance later on in the studying phase i'm sure many people have said this on youtube and i'll say it too this test doesn't define you you can always do many different uh, many attempts if if you're not successful the first time around even look at me that's what i did don't make this test the be all end all is what i'm trying to say the lsat is simply just a stepping stone i know it doesn't seem like that right now i know it seems like your entire world at the moment it's taking up all of your time all of your effort all of your energy when you get that score that you want and you get into the school that you want i'm telling you you'll realize what i'm telling you i wouldn't even call it a chapter in your life it's simply a stepping stone to get to the next chapter in your life so with that in mind just keep in mind you know it's it, it's okay to to take your time with this and and take another attempt if you really have to delay your test if you really have to contact extra help if you really have to this is about your success and the lsat journey don't get overwhelmed with whatever the situation might be for you right now eventually you'll get into law school you'll get the score that you need so don't take it as um you know as this is it right this is just the beginning for a lot of you so don't don't uh, trip out. And that has been my LSAT journey. I hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you did, please like that, like that. Smash that like button. Share this out to a friend that you think would need this video. Comment, I'm always replying to comments. I love to talk back with you guys. And if you really, really love this channel, please subscribe, stick around with me, and I'll be pumping out more videos about law school. Soon when I start law school, those law school vlogs will start to come out. So I'm really happy to do that as well. In my next video, I'm considering doing a subscriber request from Elite Panther, shout out Elite Panther, about um, the admission cycle and how that was for me. Other than that, that's all I have for you all today. Really hope again that you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, yeah, we're all starting school pretty soon, very soon actually. So uh, good luck to anybody starting and anybody just starting their uh, LSAT training or trying to look for a course. Uh, best of luck to you. 
Um, if you are interested, my uh, LSAT tutors information is uh, listed in my last video right there. Thank you guys for watching. That's it for today's video. See you on the next one.